The heavily armored ankylosaurid dinosaurs are famous for the powerful clubs they had at the end of their tails, which made them a challenge for even the deadliest predators. While these dinosaurs have a substantial media presence, the long-necked sauropod dinosaur Shunosaurus possessed a similar tail club long before the ankylosaurids developed such weaponry. In spite of its obscurity compared to them or fellow sauropods like Apatosaurus, numerous Shunosaurus skeletons have been found, many of them nearly complete, making it one of the most important sauropod dinosaurs ever discovered. Shunosaurus's fossils are from the lower Shaxamiao Formation in China, which dates to the Middle and Late Jurassic. They were first found in the Zigong Dashanpu Quarry during 1977, and Shunosaurus was formally named and described in 1983. Shunosaurus means Shu reptile, Shu being an old name for Sichuan, the province the Zigong Dashanpu Quarry belongs to. The area was originally excavated to mine natural gas, which the name of another dinosaur found there, the theropod Gasosaurus, is in reference to. Today, the Zigong Dinosaur Museum has been built around the quarry, and while some Shunosaurus skeletons are displayed there in a traditional manner, many more articulated Shunosaurus skeletons can be seen laying in the same place they were fossilized millions of years ago. Over a hundred dinosaur skeletons were excavated at the Zigong Dashanpu Quarry before construction of the museum even began in 1985, and 90% of them belong to Shunosaurus. Both their abundance and completeness are nothing short of extraordinary for any dinosaur, let alone a sauropod. The lower Shaxamiao formation is sometimes even called the Shunosaurus Umesaurus assemblage, although half of the species of the sauropod Umesaurus are actually found in the upper Shaxamiao formation, which is sometimes called the Mamunchisaurus assemblage. Different species of the large Allosaurus-like carnosaur Yangchuanosaurus are likewise found in both subunits of the Shaxamiao formation. While most Shunosaurus fossils belong to the type species Shunosaurus lii, a second species, Shunosaurus jiangiensis, has been found in the Yunnan province, which is just to the south of Sichuan. Shunosaurus jiangiensis was larger and the shape of its pectoral girdle was different, but it was otherwise similar to Shunosaurus lii. Shunosaurus lii fossils have been found at the same site, meaning that the two species coexisted. Shunosaurus lii's localized abundance at the Zigong Dashanpu quarry is strong evidence that it lived in massive herds. While this was a common behavior among sauropods, it was all the more important for Shunosaurus lii due to its relatively small body size. It was about 10 meters long and weighed only about 3 tons. While not quite a dwarf and not small by any measure, its weight was well below that of a typical African forest elephant. The weight of other sauropods is usually quantified in terms of multiples of the larger African bush elephant. The massive megatheropods like the Carcharodontosaurids wouldn't evolve for some time, but the world was already full of predators who had evolved to hunt its titanic cousins, so it's little wonder Shunosaurus evolved its iconic club tail to fight them off. Shunosaurus jiangiensis was substantially larger, but it was still far from the biggest herbivore in Jurassic China so would have likewise benefited greatly from its weaponized tail. Shunosaurus still grew quickly, as the larger sauropods did. Its bones lack signs of arrested growth, indicating they grew throughout the year, rather than slowing down during less productive seasons. Unlike birds, but like crocodilians and many other extinct dinosaurs, Shunosaurus continued to grow after reaching adulthood, albeit at a slower rate. Still, even the oldest Shunosaurus had no hope of approaching the size of more typical sauropods. Despite the comparisons made between them, Shunosaurus's tail club was not made the same way as those of ankylosaurids. Theirs were made by large, bony plates called osteoderms, which surrounded the end of the tail. Shunosaurus's club was instead formed by several enlarged vertebrae, although osteoderms were still part of the structure, forming two pairs of spikes. It should be noted that the bone at the end is not another spike, but a final vertebra. The spikes of this sauropod resembled the thagomizers of the stegosaurs, who were close relatives of the ankylosaurs. Unlike the tails of most other sauropods, Shunosaurus vertebrae retain a complex shape right until they reach the club. They served as attachment points for muscles, increasing both the power and motor control Shunosaurus had over its club. 
It was proportionally smaller than those of ankylosaurs, and its spikes were shorter than stegosaur thagomizers, but Shunosaurus' club had the advantage of height. Rather than breaking shins, Shunosaurus could strike its attackers right in the face. As dangerous as its tail was, carnivorous theropods wouldn't have had any better luck attacking it from the front. Shunosaurus' legs were proportionally long for its size, and their kicks could have easily fended off assailants, especially since the forelimbs had the large thumb spikes typical of other early sauropods. Although a healthy Shunosaurus was not virtually immune to predation as the largest sauropods were, every one of those giants were once the size of Shunosaurus lii, and they would have been far more vulnerable at that stage. Furthermore, with their deadly arsenal, juvenile Shunosaurus would have had a better chance of reaching adulthood than their potentially larger peers. Finite element analysis has proven that the larger clubs found in the ankylosaurid dinosaurs were capable of being used as effective weapons, but the same techniques haven't yet been tested on Shunosaurus. However, Shunosaurus wasn't the only sauropod with a tail club. Although not as well known, the sauropods Umesaurus and Mamunchisaurus had similar club-like structures at the end of their tails, although they were smaller and lacked Shunosaurus's spikes. The Nigerian sauropod Spinophorosaurus was once thought to have had tail spikes, but they were not actually found in association with the tail. They are now thought to have merely been misidentified clavicles, bones belonging to the pectoral girdle. A finite element analysis of Mamunchisaurus's genuine tail club concluded that it was not an effective weapon. The clubs of Shunosaurus and Umesaurus were quite different from the one belonging to Mamunchisaurus, so the study has little applicability towards the function of their clubs. Even the applicability towards Mamunchisaurus itself is questionable, since only one tail club belonging to the genus has been found, and given the differences between it and those of the closely related Umesaurus, it cannot be ruled out that its shape was the result of a detrimental mutation specific to that individual. While the role of Mamunchisaurus's tail club is currently in doubt, the presence of spikes on Shunosaurus's larger club make it seem highly unlikely that its primary function wasn't as a weapon. Although they were all basal sauropods with tail clubs, Shunosaurus was not closely related to Omesaurus or Mamunchisaurus. Beyond that, it is unclear who Shunosaurus' closest relatives were. Even though its entire skeleton is known, the same cannot be said for most other early sauropods, leaving their precise interrelationships uncertain. Shunosaurus was about the same size as the first sauropods, so rather than shrinking in size as dwarf sauropods like Europasaurus and Magyarosaurus did, it may simply have stayed the same size. While most sauropods adapted to the increasingly deadly meat-eating theropods by growing larger, Shunosaurus's tail club offered it a different way to deal with them. Additionally, the Shaxi-Meow formation was a forested environment where Shunosaurus's relatively smaller size may have actually given it an edge over its larger, more cumbersome cousins. Even though they weren't related to it, both of the other club-tailed sauropods are also found in the Shaxi-Meow formation although Mamunchisaurus is restricted to the upper portion of the formation. The leading hypothesis is that, like the ankylosaurs, this was the result of evolutionary convergence. It could have been in response to local conditions specific to Jurassic China, such as the unique strategies of a native carnivore. As will be elaborated on later, the fauna found in the Shaxamia formation was unique compared to other Jurassic localities. On the other hand, since they are all basal sauropods, it is possible that tail clubs like these may have been more common among early sauropods than was previously thought, and only later lost in the more derived species. These sauropods were not the only ones to converge upon traits typically associated with ankylosaurs. Osteoderms, the same structures which make up the armor of the dinosaurian tanks, have been discovered on some titanosaurs, like Saltosaurus. Despite the similarities, not enough have been found to determine if their primary purpose was actually protection. They are heavily vascularized, so some scientists have proposed they may have instead been used to shed excess heat. However, like Shunosaurus, Saltosaurus was small by sauropod standards, if still large in absolute terms, so increased protection from predators would have been a greater concern for it than thermoregulation. Shunosaurus's tail club may be its most iconic trait, but its fossilized skulls are also exceptional finds. 
Unlike the rest of their otherwise robust skeletons, sauropod skulls were built delicately to avoid placing too much strain on their famously long necks. This meant that they quickly broke apart when the animal died, and their disarticulated fragments were unlikely to endure the elements long enough to be fossilized and are even less likely to be complete. Shunosaurus is one of just a handful of exceptions, and provides one of the few insights into what the skulls of basal sauropods were like. Adult Shunosaurus heads were wide and blunt, matching the pattern seen in most other sauropods. It had more teeth than most sauropods, with 25 in the lower jaw, and atypically for the clade, its lower jaw contains more teeth than the upper jaw. The jaws curve upward at the anterior end of the skull, creating a shape that has been compared to garden shears, although the teeth themselves curve inward. Most of them were long and cylindrical with spatulate, spoon-shaped crowns. However, Chunosaurus's lower jaw contained a second type of tooth, which was compressed with serrations on the sides. These teeth resembled those of its prosauropod ancestors and had already been lost in more derived sauropods. Like other sauropods and most other dinosaurs, Shunosaurus replaced its teeth throughout its life. However, they lasted longer than normal, and each tooth only spent about 20% of its life cycle in the replacement stage. This was because Shunosaurus's teeth had evolved to fit together so precisely that their operation would have been compromised if too many were stuck in the replacement phase. Still, like other sauropods, it did not chew its food, but merely chomped it into pieces small enough to swallow. Shunosaurus coexisted with a number of other sauropods, and they had evolved to divide the limited resources of their environment between them, which is called niche partitioning. Mamenchisaurids like Amesaurus had the proportionally longest necks of all sauropods, which allowed them to reach the highest tree branches. Shunosaurus instead had one of the proportionally shortest necks of any sauropod. It was only outdone by the bizarre Argentinian dicreosaurid Brachytrachylopan. Unlike its more extreme cousin, Shunosaurus's unusually long legs would have partially compensated for its shortened neck, allowing it to browse from the lower treetops. This would have placed it in a niche between the other sauropods and the smaller stegosaurs. Its teeth were robust, so Shunosaurus is thought to have been a generalist whose diet often consisted of coarse vegetation. Supporting this, its jaws were capable of a wide gape, allowing the club-tailed sauropod to fill its mouth with as much food as possible. However, juvenile skulls were notably narrower, with a more pointed shape, suggesting they had a more selective diet than the adults. The time Shunosaurus lived is also noteworthy. The Shaksimiao site in the Yunnan province is dated to 166 million years ago, during the Middle Jurassic. Few Middle Jurassic dinosaur fossils have been excavated, and Shunosaurus's native environment is the best understood from that time. The fossils from the Zigong Dashanpu quarry were once considered to have also been Middle Jurassic in age due to similarities between them and other Middle Jurassic dinosaurs. However, more recent research using radiometric dating has determined that the dinosaurs preserved there died about 159 million years ago at the start of the late Jurassic. This has some pretty major evolutionary implications. By the late Jurassic, all sauropods found outside of Asia, from Camarasaurus to the famous Brontosaurus, belonged to the clade Neosauropoda. However, Shunosaurus and the majority of the other Chinese sauropods are almost universally basal species. This trend continues into the upper Shaksimiao formation, which extends to the end of the late Jurassic, showing that Shunosaurus's home in prehistoric China was anomalous among late Jurassic ecosystems, being something of a sauropod equivalent of Australia. While not a giant, with its spiked tail club, Shunosaurus is one of the most distinctive sauropods, in a stark example of the remarkable diversity contained within the clade. Despite Shunosaurus being one of the rare sauropods known from complete skeletons, a lot more remains to be learned about it. For instance, a detailed description of its postcranial anatomy has yet to be conducted, and a finite element analysis could be done to model the strength and mobility of its tail club. Like the rest of the animal, the findings of such research will certainly be extraordinary. Thank you for watching. And a thank you to the Mandalorian for narrating this video. If you enjoyed it, please remember to hit the like button and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Finally, be sure to have a great day.